Hello, hello, I'm Joe, and welcome to the video. So, I have a lot of old characters. I don't know why or how, but back in middle school, 7th grade me was on an art high. I mean, I was creating characters left and right, giving them all horribly written backstories, drawing them over and over and over again, filling up sketchbook after sketchbook after sketchbook. These middle school age characters had drama, they had passion, they had angst. Again, horribly written, but still. I created more than I ever had in my lifetime thus far, and I haven't had such a long-winded burst of motivation ever since. And god I miss it. I just started college, so between my job, college work, and keeping up with all of my relationships, I haven't had too much time to just sit down and enjoy art. But the one thing I've always found to help me with an art block or just getting back into my creative practice is looking back at these old middle school sketchbooks and reminding myself of how freeing art used to be for me. Without going too much into detail, I used my characters as a sort of escape in middle school, which I think is part of the reason why I poured so much into them. Luckily, life has gotten better, but that also means I don't really have anything to use art to escape from. And, like I said, my life is just busier now, so my characters and stories are usually on the back burner. But I, I really want to change that. I've mentioned my story, Collateral, in passing, and I've talked about my current characters here and there, but lord, I just want to pour so much more love and care into my story than I have time to. So while this video is going to be me revisiting and redesigning my old OCs, it also serves as an opportunity for me to just be very self-indulgent, so I can think and talk about world building, character design rules, just, just all things I want to think and talk about. College has been stressful, I, I need this opportunity, so I'm taking it, I'm taking it! I'll also be talking about some of the rules and things I think about whenever I make a character design. I'm not a professional, definitely not, but I like to think I have a good basic idea of what I'm doing, so I'll be explaining that as well. Anyways, let's dive into the first redesign. The first character I'll be redesigning is my old OC from 7th grade, Bill Reese. And I'm considering his redesign to be warm up because I already had a pretty good idea of what I wanted him to look like. Bill was a soccer player. He was very outgoing, kind of a trickster, but most importantly, I didn't give him any trauma. Or any story, really. He was just kind of there in middle school and having a good time. He was most commonly drawn with my other OC, Calvin, who I love so so much, and I redesigned him a while ago, so I knew Bill eventually needed to be revamped too, in both his design and his story. And his name, actually. I don't think Bill fits him anymore. Okay, speed paint time. Keep in mind this ramble is gonna be kind of all over the place, so if what I'm talking about doesn't match with what's on screen, Please <laughs> excuse me. So it's kind of hard explaining some of my design decisions without giving a little insight into my story's design, concepts, philosophy, whatever. So here are like a few rules. For one, any character I design for Collateral has 3D animation in mind. Arcane and Spider-Verse live in my head rent free. They are all I think about. And so I always try to design things as if I were going to put them in a show or a movie in a similar style. Two, without giving too much away about the plot, the overarching narrative revolves around a conflict between two groups, the Moths and the Sun. Neither group is evil, neither is good, it's not completely developed yet, but the Moths and the Sun, that's a really important detail that I'll keep mentioning. Three, I take a lot of inspiration for my character design and world aesthetic from Howl's Moving Castle in Arcane, and no, I will never shut up about the show. It's like if you took those two aesthetics and you fused them into one. So the costuming for my characters will not involve modern fashion, like at all. Okay, now let's talk Bill's design. The first thing I wanted to do was change his hair and just do a headshot, get his overall face and attitude out of the way. In this revamp of Bill, I'm aging him up from like 12 to 20 years old, so I needed to change a lot of things. First of all, his hair. In middle school, I gave most of my male characters a very similar, almost copy-paste haircut. I, I don't even know what the style is supposed to be, but I knew it needed to be changed. I decided to give Bill poodle puffs that went to his chin to help give him a softer look. Though Bill is supposed to be more edgy and sophisticated in this revamp, I wanted his hair to have a fluffier look to it because deep down, Bill is a softy. He's very sentimental. In fact, that hairstyle holds a lot of sentimental value to him. And no, I will not be giving any further explanation. I've also found that I love giving characters multicolored hair. 
I thought teal was a fitting color for him, so I made his hair into a dark, dark, dark blue and teal ombre. Now with the outfit rule in mind, let's talk Bill's costuming. With costuming, specifically for Bill, I tried to keep the silhouette first and foremost in my mind. I knew I wanted his outfit to be something that took up a lot of space. I like to think Bill is a well-respected person within the moth community. He's not a leader himself, but he's definitely someone that will go behind the leader's back just to make the change he think needs to be done himself. He's not the loudest person, but if he's in a room, you just, you know he's in there. He makes himself known. Thing is, he's a short guy, 5 foot 6 to be exact, so his clothing needed to be big to compensate for the fact that he's, he's, he's just kinda tiny. Therefore, I present to you, big, giant, colorful cloak. <laughs> now, because his cloak was the centerpiece to his design, naturally, it was the part I <laughs> struggled the most on. I knew its silhouette and shape from the beginning, I had no problems with that. My trouble started whenever I tried to tackle the colors and the patterns, I don't know if y'all can see me struggling yet, but it literally took me until the end of the drawing to be happy with the cloak. And lord, there are still some things I think I could have done better. Side note, I'm writing the script after finishing the drawing, and I definitely think I could have made the cloak a bit more dramatic. But this design is a draft, I can always go back and fix it later. Anyways, let me talk about my goals for Bill's new... personality, I guess. So since I'm aging him up, I still want his old personality to be canon. Like. Okay, my goal for this personality revamp is to take what I already have, give that personality to his past self, and then have some trauma happen between the ages of 12 and 20. I, I hope that makes sense. I won't get into his trauma because I still don't exactly know what his story is gonna be, but lord, just know it'll be much more intense than just being in middle school. I can guarantee that much. Y'all, I want to talk about my story, but since it's in its early development phases, I just- I feel like I should refrain. I feel like I shouldn't talk about it. I need to keep it a secret in case I change things, but yeah, anyways, Bill- Bill's gonna have trauma. I'm sorry. Okay, now at this point, I was feeling kind of stuck. I just felt like there was something off about his design and I could not put my finger onto what it was. So I posted this photo into a Discord server I'm in and I asked for help. Uh, more specifically, I asked for character assumptions. Luckily, a few artists chimed in, but specifically at Pistachiomi, who is so sweet and has a YouTube channel you should all go check out, said that they assumed the jacket was gifted to him and he doesn't really like getting dressed up. Which... I... <laughs> that's not... those aren't the vibes I'm going for. I want him to look sophisticated. It, it, that's not it. They suggested that I keep the rest of the design the same, but change the shirt to be something less casual, and I took one look at my drawing, I thought about it, and I completely agreed. Like, that was exactly what I needed to hear. I ended up changing his shirt color from the light gray to the same color of his pants. If not, then just like, slightly lighter. I figured making his shirt a darker color would help the jacket stand out more, and wow, I, I was right. That was exactly the change I needed. I also remembered that I had originally sketched him with a bunch of jewelry, and whenever I was talking about his design thus far in the server, I realized I hadn't added any at all. So I gave him some gold rings, some gold bracelets, some gold necklaces, just gold everything. I had already established that as an accent color with his pants, so it fit right into the design. I feel like I need to mention his cloak again though, specifically the back of it. I just... I need more practice with patterns and random designs and I, I don't know, stuff like that. Just because the back was giving me so much trouble, I decided it's not worth the mental strain. If I'm not enjoying designing this, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to. So I didn't. I didn't design the back of his cloak. I want to put a lot of thought into it anyways, because lore-wise, it's important, but I don't have the time to think about it right now, so we're gonna settle for this. One more thing about the cloak though, I just thought of this while I was recording. Bill is out and proud about his hatred for people on the sun side, and, like I said, he takes matters into his own hands about things, but he can, he can be very secretive. He hides stuff from others. And what is a kind of clothing that can obscure a lot of your body and hide certain parts of it from other people, not showing off the whole thing? A cloak. Double meaning. Yeah. <laughs> Overall, I really like how Bill turned out. He is probably one of my favorite characters now. I, I need to draw him more. I also think I need to simplify his design a lot because I, ooh, I went overboard with the details. 
Oh well, here he is in all of his glory. The finished design for now. Bill, I will return to you later. Oh, and like, if any of y'all have any name suggestions for this guy, please leave them in the comments. I don't- I still don't know how to feel about Bill. I don't know how to feel about that name. Just it, it, help. <laughs> The next character I'll be redesigning is Pandora, who is also a character from 7th grade. Pandora was... Uh, interesting. I think my backstory for her was that she was the school bully, um, she killed her parents, and then created an atomic bomb that destroyed the world. I... I don't even know why. Like, what... <laughs> what was I thinking? And I think the main conflict of the story was like, Calvin and Bill had to stop Pandora from destroying the world. But, but that girl, she was crazy. See, this is what I mean by horribly written backstory. Luckily, I don't hate her design. There are parts of it that I really like, like she's cute. I don't hate her. We're just, we're gonna have to completely start over with the backstory and personality. I, I can't, I cannot. I will say, right off the bat, I feel bad. I put a lot less effort into Pandora's redesign because I just, I didn't know what to do with her character, just straight up. I feel like I put all of my thought and effort and blood, sweat, and tears into Bill, and I kind of just left her there. Now the first thing I did for this was I drew a full body of her old design based on this list of what was apparently her trademark outfit, even though I literally couldn't find any artwork of it. I did this just to warm up because, like I said, no ideas. And the only thing that came out of this warm-up was me realizing she had a strikingly similar outfit to Luz from the Owl House. Both outfits are a fashion disaster, by the way, but Pandora's looked worse somehow. The one thing I knew I wanted to do with her was to put her on the sun side of things. I still want her to be a rival of sorts to Calvin and Bill, and since they're both on the moth side, I just- I, I had to plop her on the other one, on the other side. Other than that, not much was going through my head. To try to combat the absolute creative block this design was giving me, I ended up on Pinterest and I looked up some jewelry slash brooch designs to try to give me, like, some sort of inspiration. I sketched a silhouette and some details that I thought would be fun and ornate. Like, at first I was thinking, oh, she could be at a similar level of, like, political ranking as Bill, except she goes an entirely different way about getting things done. But you'll see as I continue the sketch of her design, I, I totally chicken out. Like, I thought of so many cool accessories and details to add to her outfit, and I- I was a coward because I erased, like, all of them by the end of her redesign. <laughs> Anyways, her hair, her face, let me talk about those for a second. Pandora's original design didn't have much going on for her face besides her pointy nose and sort of short face, and I- I tried. I tried to keep those both in the redesign, but I failed. I totally failed. This, this face, this is not Pandora. I don't know who this is. I will say though, I like the hair. I didn't want her to end up with short hair like her old design, just because like, I'm not a fan of her old hairstyle. But I liked the idea of it. So I put her hair up in a messy bun and I added some pink strands of hair because I can. Back to her costume though. I took a lot of inspiration for it from my old Luna Bell design I made back in like April, I think. Side tangent. That reference is totally outdated now. Like, I feel like her most iconic outfit is of her in that dress, but that doesn't make any sense because of some of the fashion rules I have in place in the world. I'm not gonna ramble about them now, they're too complicated, but a TLDR, I need to make a new Lunabelle reference. Anyways, Pandora. Lunabelle and Pandora are both on the sun side, and I want everyone in this group to have a very similar aesthetic. So I looked at some of the basic details in Lunabelle's outfit and I took... heavy inspiration from them. Uh, I straight up stole the color palette because I figured this shade of blue and the yellow accents with it could be like associated with the sun because it's like the sky is blue and the sun is yellow. Yeah. Oh, Lord knows finding an original color palette for this piece would have been a pain. So I, I just settled for these colors. I feel like I'm going insane. This, this, this redesign drove me insane. You might have also noticed that the style for this piece is completely different from the style I used for Bill, and my only explanation for that is that my style is extremely inconsistent. 
especially with digital art. Like, it's very rare for me to draw two things with the same exact style. I feel like we, as an art community, just need to accept that some artists, they, they don't have art styles. The only thing that I am consistent with is my inconsistency. That's it. Anyways, I'm done. I'm done with Pandora now. Here is the finished piece. I think her design is really cute, but uninspired. Like, this girl is pretty, but her design has no personality. Wait, actually? Hold up. I'm sorry, this is going completely off script. But that actually makes sense for the sun side. Hold on. Lore? Wait, things are clicking. This design drove me insane. I have come full circle with it. At first, I didn't really like it because I thought it was uninspired. But now I realize there could be a reason for it to be uninspired. Ooh, okay. I like Pandora's redesign. We're, we're done redesigning characters now. And that's the video. Overall, I'm very happy with both of their redesigns. I still feel like Bill's is better than Pandora's. Like, I, I need to put so much more effort into Pandora's. I need to think about that girl more. But I still think they're both really, really good. <laughs> If you liked this video and you want to see me redesign more of my old characters, please let me know. There are so many more characters that need to be redesigned. They need more love. I need to bring them back. And I would absolutely love to do it for a video. If you've made it this far in this video, be sure to leave a like, a comment, and maybe even subscribe. You know, the whole package. And if you're interested in following me elsewhere, I have an Instagram and a Pinterest. Both are at Josta. And I'll usually post on my Instagram stories about like where I am in the process of making my videos, if that's at all interesting to you. I also just like to post more of my art on there because like, what else do I have to post? Anyways, yeah. Also y'all, look at this fan art! Look at all this Lunabelle art! I started getting more fan art on Instagram and I- Ooh, I am so, so honored. All of it is just so, so pretty. The fact that people like my characters is just, oh my gosh, it, oh, it makes me so happy. And I am just so appreciative for every single piece that people have drawn for me. It's insane. If you like any of these pieces, these people's handles will be on screen. And be sure to go check them out because they all have such good art. And yeah, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!